So perfect. So I guess we'll we'll get started because we're probably running a little late here. So I get the, the plan will be we'll just you know have have maybe the first 15, 20, 25 minutes or something, just kind of go over where you were, where like where you've been in, in uh your real estate experience and then where you are now today. And then we'll kind of open it up because I think there's more value in having everyone just network and have con actual conversations with you. So sure. um and no, I've got go. Evan here. Have you have you met Evan, Matt? Uh, we have yeah, not not yet, Evan. No, yeah. Right. What's going on, Matt? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm not as good as you, man. You look like you chilled out. <laughs> yeah, man. We, we call this pillow talk with uh, with us. Uh, I know, right? That is Wednesday <laughs> after afternoon look right there, man. Wow. Totally. All right. Lounging, I'm good enough. Yeah. I'm strong enough, and doggone it, people like me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All I need is a beer, and I'm I'm ready to go, man. Yeah, I know. Or I could just, like lay on the couch and tell you about my childhood or something like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's the other way around right um that's right. perfect though so so i guess we'll start with um where you are and then how, how you got back or you know how you got there today so where where is derosa group today uh so we're a uh property ownership company uh we offer uh you know investing for people that don't want to do the work but want to enjoy the returns um our mantra is to transform lives through real estate that was something we set 16 years ago we first got started um we've done uh a lot of single family home rentals we've done fix and flips i think about four dozen fix and flips um we've done a lot of residential rentals uh over our career uh, at one point we had like 115 units in trenton and in-house property management um, and that was our, you know, vision and our model at one point. Um, we've since pivoted away from in-house management and gotten into third-party management, which is which has allowed us to slowly scale into multifamily. Um, you know, I, I'm like the one multifamily investor I know of that didn't, didn't just go to some multifamily course and all of a sudden is poof, a multifamily <laughs> investor. I've, I've scaled into it slowly in that, uh, but that's that's okay. It's, there's different ways you can do it. You know, uh, so we are primarily focused on residential housing. Um, and we're active in North Carolina and Kentucky, uh, and Pennsylvania and a little bit, New Jersey, uh, you know, under protest. So, <laughs> yeah. and you own the office building, right. That I, uh, For now, visited you at. yeah, yeah. I, I, if, as of right now, uh, fingers crossed, man, we're selling that place in two weeks. Where are you guys going to move? Uh, we're going to lease then? it back. We're going to, we're oh, selling are, right. it to a buyer and we're going to lease back uh, the offices that we use. All right. It, it's a 10,000 square foot building. I only use, I use one office and a big common area for my meetings and stuff like that. So I'll just rent that from them and then they can, they'll get their revenue from the rest of the tenants. Perfect. What was the whole thing rented out? I don't even remember. For what the I most saying. part, but I mean, there, there's some value add that they could do. The rents are probably under market. Um, because you can't be great at everything. And that's probably the lesson there is that if you're going to pick a lane of real estate, uh, you should just go all in on it, right? Make that yeah. the lane you want to be in. And, and for the longest time, Brad, I was, huh, there was a point one time I had like four flips going on. I was, I had a whole portfolio of tax liens. I had however many, you know, small single family, you know, rentals and, um, that we did a lot of brewer strategy stuff and we were tr looking at multifamily and I own that office building and I never slept, you know? <laughs> so I, um, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I, I think that a lot of that stunted our growth, uh, from just focusing. Right. So I, I think that this new buyer really focuses on commercial and office. And so they know, how to play the dollars per square foot game and stuff like that and how to provide real amenities to office users and stuff. So I'm going to let them focus on that. And they, and they want to, they're going to brand it differently and they've got a whole model they want to drop in and stuff like that. So that'll be their baby. And they do not want to do multifamily. They've referred, they've forwarded me leads on multifamily deals. They don't want to do. So I think they, they get that there's a thousand ways you can make money in real estate. And it, it's, it's actually not always apartment buildings, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's interesting because I've uh, spoke to Yerusis about that before. Of like they, I don't know if you know Jason and Peely Yerusi, but oh, yeah. they they were in everything that, and then they're like, I, how, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? They're we recovering New at, Jersey you know? residents, also, you know. Yeah, they were in yeah. Tennessee now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah they they did the exit. Um, no, they yeah, but they found a phenomenal niche, and I saw what they're up to. And and Jason is like a fourth generation. Uh, you know, he has construction. He has like you know 
with two by fours and nails in his veins, right? So right. He, yeah. he knows a construction like the back of his hand. So he's able to do big reno. And I think they're buying a hotel and turning it into some like jacked up <laughs> Mac Daddy Airbnb, which looked amazing. So um, not something I could pull off, but given their vision and everything like that, there's a space for everyone in this in this real estate world. So, um, and they're also good at multifamily too, so. Yeah, they, they've got their hands in a lot of stuff. And I, um, so I, I was reading, uh, which is funny, you have, you have it right behind you. Remember, uh, remember, oh, you can't see it. I got the little thing. I've got yeah. the, the old, uh, the old, Why you the old book out, man. That's yeah, cold I don't know. Yeah. Um, but you've got it in the background there. So I saw, I nice I was and clear. reading through it, you, so you started <laughs> with a single family, three bedroom, right? You were kind yes. of house hacking back in the day. Um, yes. Then you went from that point that's kind of when you were like, all right, we want to do this, but then you scaled. So what was that next property? I think you did like a $30,000 yeah, loan or we something. Borrowed from 30 family, grand right? from my wife's father, my girlfriend's father, you know, right. uh, Liz's dad named Salvatore, you know, I borrowed 30 grand from him and he, uh, you know, loaned us 30 grand for this duplex. And they just believed in us. I mean, to, to loan money to your girlfriend's boyfriend, to do a real estate deal. I mean, that's faith right there. And, you know, we ended up getting married and all that. So, uh, so it all worked out, but we bought a, uh, duplex. I mean, this is like, it's a different world, man. I mean, yeah. I will say how we got it was interesting as a tip. We got the deal. I don't know if this is even in the book, but we got the deal because we picked up, this is I dating myself. I picked up a newspaper and we looked in the, in the, uh, for rent ads in the newspaper and called, all the for rent ads saying, Hey, I see you. I see you have it listed for rent. Are you interested in selling? I see you have it for rent. If you're interested in selling, because anybody offering a property, a smaller property for rent means they've got vacancy. And that means they have a problem. That means they're losing money. And, and that is the time to call them. And so to my wholesaler peeps, to my people looking for small bird deals or whatever, that's who you want to call, call them up, like, hit them up on the Facebook ad that they've got these days, you know, or the Craigslist ad or whatever vehicle they're using not apartments.com because that's all big multifamily. So we finally got a hold of somebody that wanted to sell us their little duplex. If you bought that, and this is again, back in the day where we were able to lay 90, we, we laid 5% down on a non-owner occupied property. So we, we bought it for 150 K laid a uh, 5% down on that deal. 7,500 took the other part of the 30 grand and used it for renovations. And, and, uh, and then off we went. And, and that, that was the, that was our first non, non occupied deal. So you did like a 5% down on that. And yep. this was all, this was the wild, wild west. So this was, I think what, 2005, 2006, 2007 or something, right? No, was, right, so uh, can... that deal was 04. 04. All right. So yeah. doing some crazy mortgages at that time. Um, so you could get away with a lot more. Um, so I'll tell you one more. Yeah. We did a deal. Yeah. This is pre crash too. We bought yeah. a couple of four families and we did those with first position mortgages at 80%. And then seconds and the first position mortgages were something called negative amortization. You ever hear this? Yeah. Yeah. So I used to, uh, I was, I was a mortgage wholesaler. Yeah. So around that time, oh so my like, God. Oh, three to, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. That was like a little bomb here Buy this little explosion <laughs> that's going to happen soon. You know, I mean, it, it's a, yeah, I, I don't know, but that's you know, hey, I, I'm I'm no I, I'm no better because I did it. Like, yeah, sure, where do I sign, right? You know, we um, we would see a lot of people do that in Vegas because I was in the Vegas market at that point, and that was oh, a hot yeah. market. So you could buy a neg amp. You didn't really care that you weren't even making the mortgage payment. You're making you're you're making less than than, than the interest, but it, everything was the values were increasing so high and so fast yeah. it didn't matter. They just wanted to get in it and then sell it six months later, and they didn't care. Yeah. Um, well, remember back then, in Vegas, this happened in Vegas and Miami back then where guys were going in and laying $500 down to buy a new con to buy a unit in a new condo project. Right. Yeah. And they would lock it up for 500 bucks and then they would like, okay, I'm going to buy this condo for 300,000. It would take the developer another six months to build out the building. And then six months later, they would sell that contract and make 50 grand on a $500 deposit. Right. Yeah. Um, it was crazy there. Vegas just was flipping paper. Yeah. What's that? Vegas was Vegas was crazy like that back in the day. It was it was it was insane being there too. It was kind of yeah. cool. it's kind of a cool experience until until 08 happened. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So I know 08 affected you, right? So you have now a single family. You have a duplex. Did you did you have a couple other and then 08 came? No, or, we had scaled out. Kind of we had a couple of small apartment buildings. We had a couple of those four families that I had talked about before. Um, we had those. We had a bunch of single family homes that were in the middle of flipping uh, during the crash because crash happened like that. 
you know yeah. it was like all of a sudden boom hey what man there's turds on the fan blades how'd that happen you know like just like just all of a sudden you couldn't get a mortgage all of a sudden like cnn was like or you know in the news feeds or whatever was like you know financial collapse whatever so and banks were pulling out of deals left and right or whatever so we had a couple of fix and flips going um and the lender luckily stayed with us on on the deal and they allowed us to roll them to a perm and so we just amortized them we said you know what roll to a perm we wanted to flip them wanted to sell them but they said, you know what? We see what's going on. We don't want to hold those properties. So we ended up leasing all those flips out. And I, I held them all. I sold, I started selling them off. Believe it or not, it took about another five, six years for the market to come back to the point where I could sell them and make money. Uh, but at least you had a game plan of not, all right, we're under, let's sell these or let's give these back. At least there was, you could at least, you could, you could at least rent them, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually pay, you know, my office building was a different pay your, story. Pay your- yeah. The office building what was actually went the other way. Uh, it was actually a boost because a lot of people got laid off in 08. Right. Um, yeah. And a lot of people went out. 2008 was the first creation of a lot of entrepreneurs, right? The people that said, you know what, screw this, man. I'm not going to go and work for this big corporate thing that could just lay me off anytime I want to, anytime they want to do it. So we had a, we were, this is in Trenton, we had a bunch of lawyers show up that wanted to form a little collective and lease law offices for themselves that all got laid off by the big law firms that all of a sudden weren't getting the contracts anymore. Um, (coughs) But a few real estate people like ourselves uh, open up, property management company, that kind of thing. and that, and these are all people that was like, it was like a second life is that they had, you know, gotten their teeth kicked in through, you know, the promise of, a, of, of, a, of a good economy, keeping them employed uh, to just having to have an offend for themselves. And they needed a little office space. So the office building took off during the crash. Yeah. You see um, a, a lot of people were very smart if they had a ton of money and didn't need access to, uh, to like financial institutions to buy buy properties and you can buy them for you know pennies on the dollar so that was like an amazing amazing part of or at least an amazing part of time when if you had a ton of money to actually start buying properties and think about that um yep. so you so now we're through oh we're through 2010 where you're kind of selling properties off when when does derosa group start coming into play oh this is so liz and i found derosa is her mother's maiden name all right Right. So, so you know, from the beginning, that's when you if started. any of them met my wife, man, I mean, she's like a Paisano Italian that'll <laughs> kick your ass. Man. I, 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 I have I'm, not met her. No, no I'm no. married up. You should. Yeah. I, I, I married up, man. So, um, <clears throat> the, her entire Brooklyn Italian family, that's their, that's her, that's her mom's maiden name. So, um, that we just, it was just, it's a strong name. It was like, it was a good homage to family, a good way to, yeah. to give, uh, shout outs and stuff like that to your lineage and to your, to your legacies and stuff. So I was like, Hey, it's cool. So we started that company. We, uh, attached to that brand in 2006. So that's when DeRosa was founded. We didn't really get into the raising private capital game or working with other people's money until 2011. When again, uh, married up, she, my wife went to Penn, um, and one of her, uh, Penn friends from university of Pennsylvania, she was, uh, at a net, at a pen networking event thing. And yeah. she was like, Oh yeah. You know, my husband's doing real estate stuff. And my wife at that time was doing human research. She was doing human resources consulting. Um, and this friend of hers from Wharton, uh, was like, Oh man, I'd love to do real estate too. I just don't have the time. And she was like, you should talk to my husband. And so I rode the train up and talked to this guy up in Manhattan, who's now a financial planner in New York. Right. And we sat down and had coffee and he was just like, well, what do you got? And I'm like, I don't know. What do you want? You know? So we just figured out uh, a joint venture deal together. And I had a lawyer draft up an agreement and we just went and bought two single family homes in Trenton, um, fixed them up, renovated them and got on down the road. And then he told his friends about it and then it propagated out from there. And then one of my buddies from, from back in the day, he was like, Hey, I, I want to get involved in real estate. Want to make something else. So he got, he got in and it just slowly started to propagate out from there. And my mom started investing with us. So it's, and these were 50, that, that guy put in 50 K. Right. Um, which is a testament to, you don't have to raise millions to do a real estate deal. We, that we're doing that now, but it's not required to do a syndication. It's not required. Syndication does not mean raising millions of dollars. It does not, does not mean buying an apartment building. You know, 
Um, that's not the definition of that word. Uh, I'll turn it to a lot of people's beliefs, right? Um, so we started out small and started buying little infill properties all around Trenton and practiced transforming lives through real estate, did the right thing by the tenants and did renovations. I scaled out a management team underneath my, underneath the DeRosa brand. There it is mirror, you know? Um, so that's it. That, that's the, that's like phase one of the DeRosa growth. So at what time, Matt, did you decide to get into the multifamily space and kind of scale up? Are you on me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we stretched into, uh, so we're, we're raising DeRosa Capital 15 right now, right? So DeRosa Capital 4, uh, the fourth syndication that we did was, uh, was 300K. Um, and we bought a couple of little small multis around Trenton. Like, I, I don't know why, but I have this affinity. Maybe it's just because they're like urban core properties, but I love properties that have a retail storefront and apartments above. And I, I just, I don't know. It looked cool. They, they just have, they always have cool stories. A lot of times the owner would live upstairs and lease and rent this and work his business at the storefront and all that. So I love those kind of buildings. So we own, we owned in the past, a lot of those kind of properties. Um, and so Dross Capital 4 had created a lot of value in renovations. So we refinanced all those properties and we needed to put like 150K to work, right? So we started shopping around and we came across a 10 unit and it was like, oh my goodness, holy crap, that's a, that's a big property. So <laughs> we did a deal on this 10 unit apartment building, laid 150K down, bought it for 525 um, for Derosa Capital Four, fixed it up a little bit, you know, and, but mostly just got in and got behind the wheel and drove it. And, uh, and it was a great cash cow for us. So that was our first big multi for that it, it, like double digit multi. And then after that DC five was an 18 unit in, um, in Philly. Uh, and then we went up from there. And now 15 is 672 <laughs> units or something. There has been some scaling since then, Brad. We did not yeah, go by yeah, we, units, we, yeah. 670 units in two States, five apartment buildings in a portfolio package. It is not a fund um yeah we're not a me too let's all let's also do a fun kind of company this is a individual buying the properties themselves the actual sticks and bricks investors get direct ownership of the properties not a derivative or anything like that um and so it's it's a it's a good deal and it's uh it's two buildings in north carolina and three in kentucky so where that was like four through eight or something were all those individual projects and then you started kind of uh diversifying and add a couple of properties like within uh, each one of these or it's or funny. No. Like we kind of did the portfolio thing in one through four right. and then six was that way too. Um, but then from like seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14, we're all individual assets. Um, right. in that, so I, you can do portfolio deals. You've got one LLC and that LLC yeah. owns the dirt, uh, owns the, owns the, pro owns the individual pieces of property. So that's how we set it up. That's interesting. And are you, so as far as exiting those, there, there's probably multiple dates that they're exiting. You're trying to sell those all like one lump sum. No, because I'm the only crazy person that wants to buy in North Carolina and Kentucky at the same time. Right. So like, I can't go to Lika and be like, Hey, Lika, buy my, buy this. Cause like, oh, I'm not in North Carolina. Right. Or I could go to Angel over here. She's like, oh, no, I'm not in Kentucky. Right. So yeah. not everyone's going to like that. So what we do is we picked two markets in Lancaster too. So yeah. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So right now we're only present in three markets in the U S and I recommend that okay. to people looking to get into the game or to expand into the game is pick a specific market and just take it over and make that where you want to be. So <clears throat> we'll have three mar three properties in Winston-Salem, not the state of North Carolina, three in Winston-Salem in that town. And then seven in Lexington, Kentucky. And so our plan is to scale out and maybe, you know, this is like the um, Grant Cardone model, right? To scale out and sell up to a REIT kind of thing or a larger entity that might want to buy a lot of real estate all at once. So- yeah. There's a specific buyer with more of the portfolio then. All right. Interesting. Well, if I can buy, if I can sell like, again, somebody here might, you know, might want to do this, but more likely if I can put two to 3000 units in, in a single chunk on the market at once, right. Yeah. Those, th that portfolio would be open to larger buyers that might have lower cap rates, uh, cap rate desires, lower cost of capital. And it's called instant scale. They could look at that and say, well, I could buy that and I can, 
put my own people in to manage it. I can hire up, you know, it's, it's got that many properties has a significant amount of payroll, you know, I mean, on, on like on our under, underwriting numbers, 2,000 2, units probably has a $2 million allocation in payroll. Wow. It's, that's just staff to hire to run those properties per year. Okay. So that's a lot of hiring you could do. So we thought well, that's our model is that we want to scale up to that. And then, you know, like, Hey, here's, you, you know, a big real estate investment portfolio in a box kind of thing. Um, that's run well, run by the transforming life standard. You know, uh, that, that's, well, I'll let you know how that works out. So that, that's our idea. And it yeah. doesn't have to happen that way either, Brad. We can also, you know, sell them all piecemeal because the portfolio does not require that you sell all five buildings all at once. I can sell building two and five or one and three or refinance building number two, sell building number three, keep building number four and five. And the investors benefit from each of those activities. Yeah, one thing that you mentioned earlier in your process of scaling was that you used to self-manage the properties and now you've gone into third-party management. Can you go into a little bit of what you learned in self-managing the properties and why to sh shift over to third-party management to help you scale the business? You know, Evan, I, I think that uh, I got to throw, a few, I, I mean, I think part of it had to do with the market that I was in on why we weren't able to do it because Trenton's not a very big market. And so um, if we were in a big city, um, you know, like, like a multi-million uh, person MSA, maybe we could have made it work for longer, right? Um, but at, at that level, you, you got to think about what you focus your time on. And I realized that I was spending 80% of my time uh, on things that are producing 20% of my income right? 20% of my personal income was coming from running the PM company. I paid myself a small salary for doing that, right? That was 20% of the money I made. The other 80% was cash flow from the properties, um, you know, upside and everything like that, right? Um, but I was spending the other like 80% sitting in meetings. Should we file eviction on this person? Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we, you know, tenants walking in the door? Where's Matt? I want to talk to Matt, you know, like, and then, like I, all the tenants have my cell phone number. I was out doing showings, collecting rent and stuff like that, you know? Um, and I was getting myself out of doing that. And I probably could have, if I had taken on a few hundred more units, I probably could have hired myself out of that, you know? Um, and I know I have friends that, that started out with a couple hundred units and now, manage thousands of units, but that's also a job too. So don't forget is that owning a PM company is, can be lucrative, but it is a job. It is not something you're going to step away from anytime soon. It, it is, it's also very thankless because the only time you ever hear from tenants or from owners is, is when they're pissed. You know, um, it, you never get a thank you uh, or anything like that, right? Um, so it, it, it's, uh, but I, I'll, I'll say this, Brad, is that when I started, when I let go and I was like, okay, oh, and I'll tell you exactly what had happened. And again, married up. This is when it happened when my, my wife uh, kind of put this little bug in my ear. We're buying a 49 unit in Lancaster. And I even wrote an article for, article for Bigger Pockets one time being like, I will never buy a property 30, more than 30 minutes away from my office. So it's kind of funny how like, what life says when you say never, right? So, yeah. um, I wrote that article. And then soon after that, a 49 unit shows up in Lancaster and we had done right by people. And, you know, our phone was starting to ring more. This is Drosa Capital 7 at this time. So I'd done a few more deals, scaled up. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, okay, I think we could do this. And Lancaster's a bigger city than Trenton. And immediately everything I just said, like, hmm, maybe I can open up an office in Trenton and I'll commute back and forth. <laughs> and, it, and Trenton, by the way, Trenton and Lancaster are two hours away, right? Um, so, um, so, so it, it was not something that we could have done that on. And I try to convince my wife that, that we, that I could open up a office in Lancaster and manage it in-house, you know, while also opening, while also having our Trenton team. So, um, so that, that, that's what I wanted to do. My wife was like, you know, and she saw the 80, 20 thing. And she saw that I was frustrated with the management headaches and stuff like that. She's like, why don't you, why don't you hire someone? Try it. <laughs> Try, you know, kind of like you talk to your kid, try, you might like it, right? So she was like, try managing using a third party and you can always fire them and take it back in house. And I was like, you're right, honey. And this is how she's like the whisperer, you know, like she's the Matt whisperer. So she did that. And I was like, you're right. I tried it. And I was like, this is amazing. I don't have to, I do one call a week with the PM. I tell them what, what rents I want them to change to, what, you know, how to handle issues and stuff like that. 
And we went from that deal that took us to 150 units within two years, we were over 500 by taking management off my plate. And that's kind of like the, that continue start stop method that you talk about kind of in the book too, where you probably you're after a couple of like, all right, what, what do we want to do? Um, so I don't know if you can talk about that. She was already at stop. Yeah. She right. didn't tell me. She was yeah. like, like yeah, this needs to stop. Like yeah. I, I see my husband running around like a crazy man, you know, on, on this thing that's, that's feeding us peanuts. Stop, <laughs> you know? It was, you know, and, and I, when I did it, I was like, yeah, you're right. Stop. And, you know, so, uh, so anyway, that, that's a, uh, so continue to start and stop is to answer your question. That's an exercise yeah. that uh, I think she, you know, probably got from Tony Robbins or from somebody else or whatever it is. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, the, the, the premise is, is that you think about anything and Liz and I do this in our marriage. We do it in our business. We do it on any thing. That's a living organism that you want to discuss. Right. Um, and you talk about, a thing that's, Hey, this is going really well. And we should continue, you know, we should continue to have 9am meetings in our business because a lot of cool things come up. And I like that. So that's one thing you should continue. Okay, great. You know, we're not doing this. This is a little more challenging to do the start conversation because it's like, what doesn't exist that we need to do? Um, That's one of those things that it's, it's like, you've got to think about what's possible, you know, like, well, maybe we should be reviewing financial statements and looking at this or looking at that or looking at property values once a month or making more offers or anything, you know? So um, the, the uh, sorry, that's, I'm not doing a puppet show. I have an eight-year-old that's, that's next to me that's home by himself. <laughs> that uh that's just no i know i know i know i love you so but you gotta go you get, I, i'm talking hey buddy you. okay you can, you can sit here you can sit right here and watch that talk okay that's not gonna be boring these yeah see how excited these people are listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be boring really no daddy's laying down thunder you. over here you know so <laughs> anyway so uh one thing that has to start Right. And then one thing, this is the courageous one. That's the one thing that has to stop. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, hang on. Let, let me, let me uh, get the digital babysitter going right here. Hang on. Here you go. <laughs> you play. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Video games. Yes. Video games. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Video games. Bye. Um, okay. So that's continue start and stop. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's a great, um, you know, three great things to kind of work on. And that last one's probably the toughest one to get rid of, but that last one is the most important, you know, because a lot of that stuff, like you well, said, in your case, where it's, you got rid of stuff. That's the most that's, courageous. You know, taking up most of your time. Yeah. It takes the most courage, especially like if you're talking about your marriage or, you know, or whatever it is in your business or whatever it is, is the one that's like, Hey man, this isn't working. You know, it just needs to stop. And it's going to be a huge thing. It's not like, Hey, we're running this 150 unit property management company and that needs to stop. Right. It's not, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, it could be something simple, you know, like I, I trying to think of an example, but we could all think of an example like, of the things like in stop our stop doing my own property management and start hiring someone else to do yes. that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but like we that. can all think of things in our life, in our, in our personal life, our, our business or whatever it is that listen, if we want to be honest with ourselves, we all know, we all know this, I'm working, you know, <laughs> you know, like people over here shaking their heads in the zoom right now, like, yeah. but it's about having the courage to bring it up, you know, to say like, yeah, you know what? part business partner or whoever I'm talking to, this yeah. isn't working and we need to stop this because it's going to sink us, whatever it is. So yeah. anyway, that's my, that, that's continue start and stop. Yeah. So if, if you could go back, would you have not self-managed over the first, like however long that you got started or did you learn so much in the, in that time frame? Cause I kind of hear both sides. I hear some I know. say, they learn so much from self-managing. They're grateful to not have it on their plate anymore, but it was a very important piece of them getting to where they are and, and scaling the business. So, yeah. So I learned a lot and I saw a lot and I, and I saw, and I, I think that one thing you miss when you just, when you just manage multifamily from five States away, you know, via emails and zoom calls, right. Um, you miss the human side of housing, right. And so I saw firsthand how people live, you know, and I saw the people that lived in those properties. And I think it was just kind of like given to us because we wanted to be transforming lives to real estate. That's a mantra for the company. And so I saw that work. I saw people's lives get better because of what we were, you know, providing them. And I saw people's really down and out 
that came in the door that we were able to help out and get and get into better properties and stuff like that. So um, I'm grateful for that side of it. I'm also grateful that, you know, when, when a property manager is like, well, the tenant's just not paying the rent. Like, okay, how about an idea? We'll go knock on their door, you know? And I've done that when I've gone to multifamilies, like I, I talk to tenants all the time and they actually speak English likely, or they, they're, they're not going to bite my head off. They're just a human that just wants to have a conversation and be treated as such. Yeah. Right. So regularly I'll talk to tenants at multifamily properties and the property management company hates it. Right. It's like, Oh, he's going to speak to the tenant. What are they going to say? I'm like, yeah, I want to know what they're going to say. Tell me, you know, cause I'm used to, I, I, that's the big thing, Evan, is it got me uh, just the, the normalcy of just working one-on-one with people, collections calls, um, what's the problem? How can I help you fix it? Those kinds of things. It does stunt your growth. You know, yeah. um, you mentioned something of what I would have done earlier. If I would have gotten out of property management earlier, maybe what I really would have done earlier is I would have hitched my wagon to multiple markets um, because I was only hitched to Trenton, New Jersey. And Trenton <laughs> looks exactly the same today as it did 15 years ago when it first got started, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's not, it has not changed. And I think that you've got, you, a friend of mine gave me a huge thing. It's like uh, just adage or mantra or, or you know, uh, you, you can't change a market. You can only hope to participate in it. And I came into Trenton wanting to change it because I saw where it is geographically, what the real estate looks like there. The, the architecture there is beautiful, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a city that has its own problems that I am nowhere near going to ever be able to change. You know, and I, it, I, I'd ra- I'd knowing what I know now, I'd rather invest in markets that are moving on their own, whether or not Duros is involved. You know, I just want to participate in what the market's doing. But Trenton was not doing any kind of growth. You know, so no, no, no. You, you mentioned in the book um, about like mentoring. Um, and I know last time you and I spoke, what, a couple, it's a couple months ago now when I was up in Jersey, uh, you were going to kick off some sort of educational program or mastermind or something. Is that something you guys are still working on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I've got to find the time to, is that something, something you're starting? <laughs> well, well, d- we are doing this. Yeah. I I'm yeah, launching right. a course for bigger pockets. So here you go. Cool. Thanks for, you know, putting that out there. Uh, bigger pockets, uh, has a multifamily bootcamp that they've, uh, that they've partnered. Well, we partner with them to do. Um, and so that's going to be exciting. And we've already developed the modules. It's a 12 module course that teaches everything there is to know about getting into multifamily from the beginning steps from like finding markets and the tips and trades. And there's going to be a huge networking that's going to happen around it. A lot of pick Matt and Justin's brain and everything like that. I think it's four or 500 bucks. It's very affordable. I'll, uh, I'll drop the link here into the comment section, if you don't mind. Um, and you can help me get the word out, but um, what we want to do, and, and some of my friends on this call are aware of it because they keep asking me politely when we are actually going to get off our you-know-whats and get it going. Um, and the problem I'm having is that I, I need someone to run it for me or to, to launch it. And I don't have that. I, I kind of have that person, but they're kind of like, can't, or they're, you know, can't around with it and everything like that. But what I'd like yeah. to do, Brad, is if I can twist your arm, I'd like to have Invest Next there as well. But our, our vision a lot, there's a lot of classroom education um, already. And I don't, what I don't want to do is a, a yet another classroom education kind of thing to say, hey, let's you know, all good do a thing and let's all sit in a classroom and talk about apartment buildings and stuff. We want to do a education at one of our buildings. And we've got a good bit of them that are really good classrooms, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, and they're safe, you know, they may have had shootings in the past, but not anymore. You know, we got rid of all that. We made all the bad guys and gals go away. Um, and that, so, cause we invest in C-class, so we're not buying bougie properties. We buy the working families, the working families, uh, home. Right. So yeah. we want to do classrooms at those properties. Like, but our vision is bus tour, right. And I'll give you, I'll paint the whole picture. Right. Yeah. Brad? That'd be really cool. We want to go to Kentucky. Okay. Right. Cause I got seven properties there. So right. we want to get, I want to rent a bus and I got the best Kentucky. He's, he's like a young Colonel Sanders. He's this broker that we bought a lot of properties from. And I want to give him a microphone and stand back and just show me where your granddaddy lived and show me, he's like fifth generation Kentucky man. So it shows yeah. they'll probably show up in a seersucker suit and stuff like that. Show us the whole thing and show us where the buildings are going in and where this and that. And he's also yeah. got people that are selling 20, 30, 40 units. And I have a property management company that manages a thousand for us. So of course they'll manage for some, some of our friends, right? So he, the, the plan is to go and tour our multis do real boots on the ground lessons 
I even, I've even thought about like some challenges and like, okay, here's team A, I'm going to give you guys this unrenovated, unrenovated, unrenovated apartment. Team B, you guys get this unrenovated, unrenovated apartment. Your budget is $5,000. Go and give me the best design you can go, you know, meet with real contractors. Here they are, you know, negotiate with vendors, whatever. And I'll give you 24 hours to come up with the best design on those, on those apartments, you know, what up? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's outside the box too, you know? Yeah. Well, that's how I roll. So uh, I'm like, what box, you know? So uh, we do that. We go yeah. tour some properties that might be for sale toward the city, look to see the opportunities um, and not trying to sell anybody on Lexington, but just trying to sell people on the concept of this is how we evaluate markets. Right. Yeah. Then we go have some fun. If we do it the right time of year, there's Churchill Downs right there. We can go watch a horse race. We can go taste some bourbon. You know, we can go do some fun. That's where probably where Brad will come in, you know, conveniently. <laughs> that's, that's the only time he would be able to get there is when we're doing the bourbon tasting and the horse racing. At the right? end, yeah. Yeah. But no, honestly, we'd have our, our vendor friends come in and give a talk too and all that. So that's what that's what's inside Matt's brain. I just need somebody to implement that for me. So yeah, that's really cool. Um I, I yeah, obviously, obviously we'd be interested in that for sure. But um I, I like the concept because we see, we see a lot of masterminds or a lot of, uh, educational programs, just there's a lot of those our, out there. Yeah. Our clients are doing it. It's the same thing. You know, you're, you're in Vegas for a weekend. Um, just kind of and that's cool. hitting the books, you know, yeah. I've done that, man. You walk out of there a different person, you know, and there's good networking and good this and that, but, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those, but I don't want to get lost in no. the noise of those kinds of things. And like you said, I'm an outside the box kind of guy. So, Hey, why not get completely yeah, wacky the, the, and come up with something that's, that's never been done, you know? I think those real life walkthroughs are pretty interesting too. I see Lake is on here. I've walked through one of her properties before. That's kind of cool. Like going through like the mind of someone else and seeing the stuff that they want to redo and, and redo. Um, Ashley Wilson was like that too. I was in a car with her and she had someone walking with her phone showing the properties and she was like telling them what to look at. So it was interesting to kind of see that. The best. Um, yeah. It, it, like you said, it's better than reading. Like I, I don't like reading that much except for raising private capital by Matt Faircloth. That's an amazing. Come book. on, but, um, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> I enjoyed you. that one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think people would really enjoy that. It sounds like a pretty, uh, you know, good for the experience, good for, you know, everything kind of involved, but um, so, so I guess, I we'll, put, we'll yeah, sorry. I just put yep. the boot camp link in uh, that starts right. February 3rd. I am also putting in a, reasonably mediocre splash page that we have um I don't know say, yeah, we updated it a little bit okay all right maybe i can accept this um i'll uh I'll, I'll put the link on the splash page that people can join the mailing list to hear more about that boot camp i just talked about so perfect um and then we're um we're so we'll kind of wrap it up and then let people ask uh, this kind of ran a little far longer than i thought it was going to um we want people to kind of ask questions but is there what are you guys working on today? Are you guys, you guys have, you have what 15 you're working on? Is there anything else you guys have that you're raising capital for at this point? Um, that's enough, man. That that's... you can talk about. Yeah. All right. No, it's 20, you, yeah, yeah, it's 20.2 20. million. We just closed yeah. out, uh, two, uh, we closed out 13 and 14 and then we right. refinanced nine all in like a two week cycle. Remind me never to do that over the holidays ever again. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. So we, uh, we just closed that out, but yeah. So the only project we're working on now is Doris capital 15, um, which is, you know, I've said a few things about it, but it's 20.2 million is the, is the equity stack. We're just under halfway there. Um, and we just sold, we just sold Doris capital eight too. So Doris capital has been busy. So we refinanced nine, sold eight, and then bought, uh, 13 and bought, uh, 13, 14 recently. So anyway, um, but yeah, 15 is great. Uh, I, I'll put this in here as well. You guys can go to this website. Um, actually, it'll take you to a invest next portal. So, <laughs> you like that? You like you like how I just did that, Brad? I do yeah. like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I like yeah that I, I'll, uh, I will put this here as well. Actually, do you, do you want me to screen share and show you guys the invest, like how, you know, I can't because you've disabled Yeah, me. if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you enable me? Why don't, you, um, why don't you let me do I don't, it? I don't have I the power. Off my share function. It's along for the ride, yeah. It doesn't have the power. It's got to be me. <laughs> and this TV screen is so small, so bear with me. Evan, it is unacceptable that Brad just made you get off the couch, man. That's not cool. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like half a sit-up. Make code. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, does that my workout? I, I can count that, right? You know? We sore tomorrow. Um, you yeah, should I, be I'll... I'll I'll be brief here, but I mean, it's, uh, 
we, we've actually got a lot of great feedback. Uh, from, thank you. Uh, from our investors on, on the way the invest next portal and the way that it shows up. So this is it. This is just a roaster group.com forward slash DC 15, but it goes to our invest next side. Um, investors can log in here. We like to quote ranges. I can, if you were, if we're going to do Q and I can talk about that, but you know, we quote ranges on our deals, but we're actually thinking about raising this range up because we think it'll hit, uh, we're looking, our target is 16 and a half percent IRR. So we'll probably show like 15 to 18. We might raise this up, uh, cash on cash will push up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but what I like about invest next is it lets me pretty much cut and paste. Most of my OM is in here, you know? Um, and so, uh, here's all the five properties and this is just rosagroup.com forward slash DC 15. You guys can go out here and take a look, see what you think. Isn't this cool? Isn't that cool pick, Brad? I, and that's actually taken by the guy that we hired to do a bunch of drone videos and a, uh, video promo oh, really? and stuff like that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Try to explain cost seg, uh, just to, cause it's complicated and I want investors to understand what it is and everything like that. So. Yeah. So that's it. This is, this is our portal right here and people can go and read up about it. And here's all the assets we have in North Carolina. It actually just went in Salem. Here's everything we have in Kentucky, believe it or not. Look at all those little bubbles. Um, and that, and these are our, that's our team, the people that we rely on uh, stats on these markets and stuff. And you guys can see, we really try and give investors all the info they need to, you know, make a decision on a deal. I mean, we, we try and give them all the factors here. Oh, here's good news. If you guys know this, where is it? Guess who just announced that they're coming? Oh man, it didn't. I got to update this. They didn't. They, I don't think the announcement made it over here. There should be a Toyota logo right here. Toyota just announced an enormous factory in like just outside of Greensboro near Winston Salem, uh, where they're going to be building all the batteries for their EVs. Oh, nice. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. that is cool. Um, I wish I could really say cool. that I predicted that, Brad, or that I have the inside <laughs> spin on that. That's just sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, that definitely yeah. helps right um perfect you want to do and Q &A, we, man I, i'll stick around yeah, yeah. Gonna, you know yeah let's let's for sure where, where can, i know you've got what uh the matt faircloth at as on instagram right how else people told me that you? was a good idea yeah the matt faircloth <laughs> i like, I like some a little, you, you, little, little pompous but you know no not the other matt faircloth i'm the matt faircloth right but like i i thought uh, you know right, whatever so yeah that's my so, instagram handle sensitive. Send yeah, right. you, you, yeah, know, you, you made fun of mine, so I, I changed mine. Absolutely. Well, you have a lot of yeah. dashes, and it's like, yeah. you know, yeah, 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 but, or Saint yeah. underscore. No, 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 we're friends. Yeah, but that, that's um, what I changed. It was worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's still terrible, I, I'd hate but. to see what, what other options you had for your Instagram handle besides the one that you went with. You're like, no, no, not that. <laughs> You know, yeah, right. no, just a brutal last name, but, um, but anyway, if anyone wants to, everyone has any questions, uh, we, like, there's no point to go in and break out rooms. I think if you just have questions, you just, yeah. just shout, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to unmute, unmute yourself, type them into the uh, chat box, whatever you would like to do. We can get those questions answered for you. Angels, did you get rid of the purple hair? No, it's still purple. Okay, cool. Just making sure it's kind of your brand. <laughs> you know, sorry, it's just pulled back. Is it no, okay? You you can... almost can't do any other see? color. You, you can't I change know. it up because I've you've been the purple hair person for a while now. You know, it's like your brand. Mm -hmm. No, it you is know? now. It is. I do for it. I go for <laughs> it, man. So we uh we got our uh, deal across the finish line. Woo! I knew you would. I had no doubt. Yeah, we're still backfilling, but Jason and I actually raised uh, seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> nice. I knew you could. You, you've been grinding, though, Angel. I mean, we we all see you on online. Like, good for you. Um, you've been putting in the work, so I know that project wasn't easy for you, Angel. So, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Looks like we do have a question. I never, I never had a doubt, Angel. Um, Raphael had a question. Uh, Raphael, you want to? I, I can just answer. I can just answer what you wrote, or yeah. if you want to hop on. It might have been James. I think everyone defaulted to Raphael. Yeah, um, everybody defaulted to Raphael. Uh, this is Mauricio <laughs> from uh, from Stafford, Virginia. How you doing, Matt? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, um, I invest in Philly, and I'm, obviously, I know you're a Philly guy. Uh, what's up with multifamily in Philly? Any is this ever going to happen? Are we ever going to be able to 
get deals done, larger multifamily deals done in Philly, or just want to get your take on that, your hot take. Interesting, man. Sure. I'm happy to talk about Philly. Um, Philly. Okay. Philly is one of the, it's a big city, right? I mean, it's one of the larger cities in the U S um, but it's an old city. And so a lot of the sticks and bricks in Philly are older, right? So if you're talking about investing in the city limits of Philadelphia to the, you know, millennials looking to, you know, get on the L and, you know, just live the urban life, right? Those multis are typically owned either by people that just don't trade them, um, or they're owned by larger collectives or larger corporations and stuff like that. Like we've looked at a few of them and they were trading in like the three and a half to 4% capitalization rate. CB Richard Ellis trades most of the big multi in Philly. Um, Rittenhouse does too, but they get a lot of the scraps, the smaller scrap stuff on the, on the outskirts. If you want to make money in Philly, um, if you want to make money from the growth of Philadelphia, I would recommend that you look at garden low rise in South Jersey. Um, and you learn how to manage South Jersey because South Jersey can be a bit of an animal. Um, but it's one of those markets. It's like Detroit, right? Like if you can figure out a management play in Detroit that works, you're the only one that's going to be looking for deals there. And there's a way to make money in every market. So I, if I were to, if I were to be looking for more in Philly, I wouldn't be looking in the city because it just doesn't make the numbers just don't make sense. And it's a lot of, you know, big time money getting thrown around in Philly. Um, and so I just, and money that doesn't make sense. So I, I don't think that Philly is going to work on the midsize, multi, the midsize multi realm, but I would try South Jersey, right? Like, you know, Cherry Hill, uh, you know, Cherry Hill, Collingswood, those areas, Westmont, the, the, in that, that part of South Jersey, like Camden County, Gloucester County, those areas, because it's all like 20, 30 minutes into the city across the Walton Movement bridge. Or go down Delaware County, and it's Delaware County still a little scrappy, like Upper Darby, those areas. But there's a lot of garden low rise you can acquire out there too. Um, in that, so it, it can be done. But I would either play the burbs, or you could also play small stuff in the city and and just kind of piece it together. Like you know, like when I first got started, three, four, five units at a clip. So does that help? Yeah, it does. It does, man. Thank you, and uh, uh-huh. just appreciate all the content and stuff. I've been. You're uh, welcome, man. And I really appreciate you showing me your invest exporter. I love that. That was awesome. I'm a newer uh, customer of the platform. Yeah, no, I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go check it out. And more than welcome to get some other ideas off of it. I posted here in the, uh, posted it here in the links. So. Do, do you, um, I know we had a question about what the triangle, uh, yeah. So you've got Winston. Have you, have you thought about the, the triangle no, you down think there? Philly's hot, man. No, I mean, just like I, Apple announced that they're building a 3000 employee facility there. And, and I mean, you know, just, there's already a, a big job growth. It's, it, it's, uh, that and Charlotte are markets. We don't, and I, we, I didn't get to talk about markets yet, but we don't invest in top tier markets in the U S um, we don't. And that's, and that's because you don't have to, to make money. You know, we invested, we just made a bunch of money selling a property in Fayetteville, which is not in the top five of the North Carolina markets. Um, and that, so it's, it, it there's money to be made in any more, in any market in, in, in America. And so we, I'd, I'd rather not compete with everybody and their mama against properties in Raleigh, Durham, Research Triangle, Cary, those areas. There's other right. syndicators that do that as well. And that's not us. Um, and that you, you hear about these things where people are paying so much for C-class properties in those markets, they truly could build a new property for that, for that money. So we don't, when, when it gets to that price point, we just, we'll just walk away. So yeah. that's why we're in Greensboro, Winston-Salem, you know, uh, high point, those areas and, and they're growing. And I mean, at some point where they might outgrow us and we'll go somewhere else, you know? I love that you're Lexington. I'm actually going to be, I'm planning it. I'm, I got to drive back to Michigan. I'm still, I still haven't gone back. So since I saw you, I went down South and I'm in Myrtle beach and I'll eventually go back to Michigan. Um, love your life, man. But that's going to be like mid Feb and I'm, I'm, I'm planning on staying in Lexington, like mid February. So I don't know if any of your guys will be there, if you'll be there, but we should try If you're there, it'll be like February 16th around there, like mid, mid Feb. Um, so hopefully you're there. I wouldn't mind meeting up with you. Okay. Can you wait? Um, I'll, I'll so, keep you. I will take that off. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep you. I'll keep it. No, no. That, well, we'll take me offline. Uh, yeah. Take, take it offline about that. And I can, uh, I can connect you to tour some properties that invest next is the investor portal on because everything we have in Lexington is. So if you yeah. want to go see some properties that you guys are making people happy with our investors, 
you know, I mean, uh, and I, my guy, Dave Mitro, who you met when you're on site is going to be out yep. there in the next couple of weeks. I don't know if we can time that, but I'd love to try and help you with that. Yeah, that'd be perfect uh, to check it out. Um, I know probably the answer to this, cause you kind of talked on it earlier, you're in multifamily. Um, but I got to ask is one of my favorite storage, uh, self-storage people is on the call here. Masha, I don't know if you've met Masha, but, um, no. have you ever thought about getting in, uh, self-storage? No. Um, because there's a lot, as Masha can tell you, there's a lot of people in, uh, in self-storage already. Um, if I were to get into some, to a new space, it would be in a space that there's not a big push in now. Right. Yeah. I'll give you some examples. I, I'm not going to do self-storage. I'm not going to be yet another person buying mobile home parks. Um, and, uh, and, 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 in those kinds of things. Right. So there's enough in the, in the, in that world. So, but what, what, what we need more of is more redevelopment value add. Maybe you want to get crazy office buildings, um, yeah, also medical there, there's like, there's, there's medical you can do, uh, that are like on-site practice stuff, like to, to develop or lease out those kinds of things. So, um, or, and, and the big one that I really like, if I can convince my team to push into it is uh, flex industrial. So, and, and cause as we go into an economy where a lot more things are going to be sold online and then boxes delivered to your doorstep, everything from your laundry to food to to, you know, whatever, whatever you can think of is going to probably yeah. going to get just brought to your home. They have to keep that stuff somewhere. Um, and so the, the use of more flex industrial space for micro manufacturing or from micro storage or whatever is going to become more prevalent, I think. And the, the, the people that are smarter than me, um, that's what they've told me. So <laughs> yeah. uh, that's perfect. Um, we do have a few questions that came into, um, would bigger pockets program or mastermind tour uh, be beneficial for folks interested in new development projects? Um, I don't think so. Not for the bigger pockets course. I mean, we don't talk new construction and everything like that. I mean, no, um, the Coriel, I, I could just try and say, Hey, yeah, absolutely. You should register. <laughs> We'd be disappointed. Right. Um, like if you want to get into like either building multifamily, what, the course could do, the course will teach you for BP how to find the right market to do your development in, um, how to build your team to do the development. But we're certainly not going to get into sticks and bricks or permitting or um, easements. And entitlement. That kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, entitlement. All of that jazz is going to be the book. It, the, the, like, I'll give you the bookends, like how to lease it up, uh, how, to disp how to disposition it, how to refinance it, all that stuff. And then how to find the market that you want to do it. The middle part is on you. To, for you to figure out that. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Perfect. I mean, for what they're charging, you know, a couple hundred bucks. I mean, it's, 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 it's worth whatever ideas come out of it. So I, I would consider it if I were you, um, as long as you've got where you can learn that middle stuff, right? Um, how to use your Invest Next customer for outreach, outreach for CRM, or how to use Invest Next combination of their CRM's landing pages. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you, I could, Talk about uh, yet another Raphael. <laughs> um, I, I could uh, I could take that. We link we we work in with Invest Next in tandem with Active Campaign. So my website has an Active Campaign portal on it, um, and then we push investors through that because we also are looking for the things aside from just people that want to directly invest. Um, we don't want to as soon as people come in to say, "Hey, invest with us," you know, we want to massage it, let them get newsletters when they're interested, when they're ready to take the next step, then they can enroll in the deal. And when they're ready to enroll in the deal, that's when they go over to invest next. So we actually have two portals. We have a portal of potential everything and that's through active campaign. And that's where all of our newsletters, emails, e-blasts, all that jazz goes out through that. And then we use invest next for those that are already in or those that are probably about to get into one of our deals. So it's like their invest next is the next step down the funnel from, um, from active campaign. And I think that's a good point. Like that, what, what you said earlier or sent or showed us with the link. I mean, that's, that's the perfect time to send that link to everyone. Cause if they actually fill out the form to invest, then they're putting themselves, you know, they're really engaged in that project. And you, now you have them in the investor portal versus in your active campaign. So you know that that's went from maybe a warm lead to an actual real hot lead. And that you could probably expect that that individual is going to be investing. So that's, that's actually perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we're recording this. Yeah. Need hey. to reuse that. Yeah. There you go. Right. See, we'll invest next commercial right there. Um, <laughs> so, 
uh mason asked a question this is an interesting uh comment um we uh we bought into a vineyard hotel uh winery and resort in that so sometimes uh you can syndicate other stuff right so we syndicated uh we got involved in a syndication we were one of the we were on the team uh for a uh for a property that bought one of those kinds of things now we don't want to be that only as an operator but it's okay to diversify a little bit if you're not the operator of all of it so um, that's a property in South Jersey. That, that's a vineyard that we're involved in. So that's just a interesting, uh, you know, note that it's okay to diversify a little bit if you're not the operator on all of it. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks. You? Thanks for uh, thanks for that question, um, <laughs> Mason. I know you've been uh, rocking it down in Texas in the vineyard vineyard space so thanks for uh i know you don't like people getting into your space though <laughs> yeah i mean the, the last person i need in there is matt so i mean <laughs> 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 but it, was that was that with uh um uh, gosh um blanking on his name uh help me out here guy who runs the the winery resort oh josh mccallan yeah yeah mccallan that's right mm -hmm. No. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I've been following that project. That that was really cool. That's Thank really you. Cool. Yeah, he's a future invest next client. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's a great set. Well, I mean, not to like get into the rabbit hole in resorts, but like he he bought a five million dollar property. He bought it for five million. It had appraised for ten the day he bought it, and he was the only bidder on the property. Um, so imagine that if that were multifamily that I sold for 14 million, you know, that's only worth 10 that have been 95 bidders, you know, and because it was a bank foreclosure, right? So at the end of the day, you kind of got to absorb the masses and do the opposite in some ways. Again, I don't resorts. I don't have the stomach for that for every investment that we do. Um, but it is a good diversification piece. And it is interesting that nobody is out there buying up resorts right now. There, there's a few, but not as many people are buying multifamily self-storage, mobile home parks, you know, make the list, right? So. Awesome. Well, I appreciate everybody for joining. I know we kind of went over a little bit, but if anybody has any questions, Matt, how do they get a hold of you? How do they, uh, how do they invest in your deals? What's what's your last uh, last pitch for the day? No problem. They just go to drosergroup.com, guys. It's all right there. Um, and, a, and a lot of the links I put in drosergroup.com forward slash DC15 is how they invest in uh, in the the uh, large portfolio we're working on now. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of links that you guys can all check out now. Click on those before we make them go away or if Brad and uh, Evan, if you guys are able to save them, great. Yeah, but those are links to our education platforms through bigger pockets. And like I said, the mastermind face-to-face -face idea that I've been kicking around. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Matt. We really appreciate your time. Uh, it's awesome. Awesome learning about you and your, uh, your history and your, your road to success. So thank you so much. Cool. It's been an honor to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks everybody. And, and I just, I, I really just Evan or, and, and uh, Brad, I feel like invest next really is and my nudge blowing smoke. You guys really are the best game out there. So I'm, I'm grateful that I'm working with you guys and, and, uh, I'm glad that you guys are supporting us and our investors reach our goals. So thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're happy you trust us with that. And you guys, I mean, you guys have been um, amazing kind of pushing us to do more stuff and you're still pushing us to do more stuff than we are. So we, we appreciate that. So um, yeah, and hopefully I'll connect again in like a month from now with at least someone on your team. So, uh, but look forward to, uh, to seeing you again soon at some point, maybe cool. in, maybe in Lexington over some bourbon like or, uh, yeah, it's plenty whiskey, of that whatever there. they have there. Yeah. So, um, plenty of that. no, cool. they just have bourbon. That's it. All right. And it, <laughs> that's Tennessee was one and bourbon. Yeah. It's in right, the water yeah, fountain. So. No, yeah. but that's it. <laughs> How dare uh, you for, whiskey. That's from, that's from Tennessee. I, I know yeah. my, my apologies. Blast for me. And do not bring up the Pappy gate thing from, uh, from Netflix heist. Don't do not speak about it when you're out there. You know, let it talk about it. <laughs> that, is, that is a great show though. It is. I know. And I'm like, I really want to ask questions, but I'm told that you guys don't like to talk about that. So it's gotta be a bourbon barrel buried somewhere, man. We oh gotta my find God. it. Oh my God. Gotta find that property. 
gotta be gotta be give me like a like a radar detector or something like that you know <laughs> bloodhound turn, turn a bloodhound loose um all right guys thank you yeah, yeah see you guys thanks so much matt take care and thank you everyone else for joining Thank you.